Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, would you like the way I sing? All right. You think you can do better? Go ahead. Uh, well, now you admit it, huh? You can't. I must say I don't blame Bluff at all. I can't hear myself think. Do you want to? I certainly do. I'm balancing my budget. Oh? Need help? Mm, not yet. Do, 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 do. Are you siding with that dog against my voice? I am. Here, how'd you like a glass of milk? That'll keep you quiet. No, thanks. You wouldn't? We just finished dinner an hour ago. That's not just finished. I'm thirsty. Sure you don't want some milk? Nope. Here, have a sip. No, go away with it. I wouldn't dream of depriving you of it. Well, if you insist. Now drink it all. Down to the last drop. There. I don't know why I have to drink all the milk when half our future child is yours. <laughs> Mine is the half that doesn't need milk. <laughs> David. What, dear? Mm, nothing. Anything wrong? You look serious. Do I? Finished with the checkbook? Mm, I'm finished, all right. What's that book you're reading? Move over, I'll read it with you. You wouldn't like it. Move over and let me see. I said you wouldn't like it. What's it about? How do you know I wouldn't like it? Lightweight aggregates. Oh, sounds fascinating. It is. Who are they? Nobody you'd know. Oh? Lightweight aggregates are building material. How nice of them. Now, let's see. There are various kinds. There are. There's waylight, and haydite, and cinders. But they each have certain natural qualities that make them... Are you, uh, you still fascinated? Move over anyway. <laughs> All right. I moved over. Besides, you know you don't want to read anymore. You couldn't be wronger. Oh. But uh, since you're not interested in lightweight aggregates, I'll postpone them till the train tomorrow morning. Don't do me any favors, darling. There's one you can do for me. What? Stop frowning. Who's frowning? You frowned all through dinner. Oh, I didn't notice. Darling. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Of course. I never felt better. You're being honest. I am only dishonest when it doesn't matter. <laughs> you, you have no moral sense, Mrs. Norton. I know. Isn't it wonderful? David. There's one now. One what? A frown. Oh. I didn't mean to interrupt, darling. What were you going to say? Uh, how's the freight terminal coming? Oh, uh, no, that wasn't it. Come clean now. What's on your mind? Oh. Nothing as usual. Seems to me you'd better start sharing that burden. That's what husbands are for, you know. They're for a great many things. All of them nice. Like sugar and spice. <laughs> now, don't change the subject. All right, since you're so nosy. I spent all day as well as all evening adding. What? What does one usually add? Oh, many number of things. <laughs> a number of things is right. I added lots of bills. Oh. David, I don't think you have any idea how much our lots of bills add up to. I have a reasonably good idea. Do you realize that right now our income is smaller than our outcome? Outgo. What'd you say? Skip it. Yes, I realize it. Trouble is, there doesn't seem to be any way around it. But, David, it's all wrong. That is a masterpiece of understatement. Now, look, I was figuring out how much money we have left. It's only $1,133. And the carpenters are costing twice as much as they estimated. Twice as much? Well, that's what they said to me today. Hey, I certainly hope they take twice as long with a new wing as they planned to take. I thought you were in such a hurry to get them out of the house. Well, you see, the longer they take, the longer it'll be before we have to pay them. And the longer they take, the more money it'll cost. Oh. But are you sure, darling, that we only have $1,100 left in the bank? Positive. I added it three times. Because of the carpenter's extra cost, I'm afraid we won't have half that much when we get through, darling. Mm. Sounds less every time you mention it. It is less every time we mention it. Where? Where did it all go? Mm. The house and 
Eighty acres cost ten thousand. That used to sound so much. Now it sounds like the cheapest thing about it. Still, it was more than I wanted to spend. No wonder that after buying the house, we didn't have any money left for the alterations. <laughs> David, no matter what, let's not buy any more mortgages. No, one mortgage is enough, thank you. Certainly is. Besides, the interest on the $4,500 mortgage we have is as much as we can carry. I don't think we can even carry that. At least not very far. <laughs> we spent 3900 on alterations. We've got $1,100 left in the bank. Pounding the carpenter is only six. Plus two sticks of furniture in the house. Empty barn. Fields to plow. And a baby on the way. I've really managed very well, haven't I? David, what do you mean? I spent all of our capital in one fell swoop. Got ourselves obligated with interest payments on a mortgage. Put everything we had into a house, which is getting to be more than we can really afford. Who says we can't afford it? It's cheaper than renting. I mean, we can't afford to do it justice. You, you, you just can't furnish a house like this with six hundred dollars. This house has been standing since 1760, David. It can wait a little longer for us to furnish it correctly. But there's no reason why you should spend your days in the living room with two chairs and a. A lamp in it. I'm not spending my days in the living room. I'm spending them all outdoors. Outdoors is beautifully furnished, thank you. More trees than I can lean on in a whole afternoon. I don't know. I'd hoped that the alterations could have been completed for about hmm, $2,000. Oh, 2000 Then we'd have a couple of thousand left, but with prices these days. Oh, who wants a couple of thousand dollars? We do. We do for, for a rainy day. Summer's coming. I told you I like having no furniture. It makes the rooms feel big. You like it. I know you're just itching to dig your fingers into some of these Connecticut antique stores. Oh, just as well I can't. I'm not supposed to drive around a lot. Do me good to itch another two months. I know. It feels so good when you stop. <laughs> as a matter of fact, David, I'm, I'm glad we aren't getting everything all at once. I mean, furniture, house, alterations... Mortgage and everything. This way I can get used to them one at a time. Much better. You, uh, you forgot something. What? The baby. Just like everything else. One at a time. I think we've bitten off more than we can chew. That's a fine way to talk about the future heir of the Norton fortunes. I am talking about the present papa of the future heir to the Norton debts. <laughs> we haven't any debts. At least none we can't afford. Uh, we will have at our present rate of speed. Darling, do you realize how much it costs to have a baby? I think it's an outrage. So do I. When you consider that everybody gets born at one time or another, $300 seems like an awful lot of money. And that's only the beginning. That's that's merely Dr. Rowland's fee. There'll be the hospital and the nurses. Nurses? I'm not going to have any nurses. I hope not. After the first five days, anyway. And that's all. I'm going to be in the hospital five days. You're awfully sure of yourself, aren't you? Am I? I wish I were as sure it'd be as simple. So, here we are. The clever young Nortons. The especially clever David Norton. With $600 in the bank. Don't go through that depressing list again. I've been going through it all day. And one thing I have decided, uh -oh. we are not going to have a maid. That's the one thing I've decided we are going to have. Why do I have to have a maid? Because you called up the agency and she's coming tomorrow. Oh, well. We'll be able to afford her. You don't have to worry. Well, if you say so. Then, of course, there's a freight terminal you and Roger are designing. We'll be rich when it's all done. How's it coming? As well as can be expected. Oh? Those things take time. Of course they do. An enormous undertaking. You can't expect to have it work out overnight. Well, don't you worry about it. Darling, your being a successful architect is the last thing I worry about. Then you have your maid, and I'll go on being a successful architect without having to worry about you. Up here alone all during well, the I'll day. I bet you don't worry at all. You're just saying that. That's right. Just trying to be polite. Oh, you. First you're nice, then you're nasty. So undependable. Everything's undependable. Well, it looks like we won't be buying that cow this year or planting the field. We will stock the barn the first thing after we stock the nursery. That's the money saved up. And the furniture bought. No, first the cow. No, no, I, I, I don't want a cow. I, I decided I don't want one. Who are you fooling? I see a cow in your eye. A 
farm is not a farm without a cow. The farm is what we bought, isn't it? I hope so. I know so. Well, this isn't getting us any place. Next time, I won't try to do so much with so little. Oh, goodness, I'm sleepy. Talking about money always makes me sleepy. <laughs> then come on up to bed. I'll turn out the light. I'll lock the front door. Oh, you got your pipe? Mm, in my pocket. Matches? In yours. Oh, where they are. There went the light. Wonder if it's warm or Look and see. Is warm. Sky's awfully big. Don't, uh, don't trip on the steps, darling. Oh, yeah. David, listen to all the frogs and crickets. Mm-hmm. Hey, don't they ever sleep? Sleep? Sure they sleep. They sleep all day. You know, it's a funny thing, David. Today, when I realized how strapped we were, I was worried. Now, after talking to you, I'm not the least bit worried anymore. Not even about the baby. Darling, it's dark and... I can't see your eyes, but tell me, honestly. You want all of this? What do you mean, David? Well, you're only 19. You're, you're going to have a baby. You're living in the country. You're alone all day, and you know, we're pretty broke. Maybe, maybe we rush too much. What do you mean? Well, I mean... Maybe you'd rather be back in New York with an easy apartment to keep going to the theater. Oh, and David, parties. no. That isn't what I want. Being together is important. That's all. You're not just saying that. Well, just add up all the things we have. We have a beautiful house, handsome Great Dane, silly old cat. <laughs> a walnut tree. We have acres and acres of land. Uh, don't forget our brook. And the barn. We have a baby coming, and a room ready for him where the sun shines in the morning. We have starlight, years of time ahead. And David, we have each other. Darling, we have no money in the bank, but we're millionaires. <laughs> when you're at the grocer's placing your order, you'll hear one woman say, A carton of Coke, please. While another will say, a carton of Coca-Cola, please. Coke or Coca-Cola, it doesn't matter. Ask for it either way. Both names mean the same thing and identify the product of the Coca-Cola company. Both are registered trademarks of the Coca-Cola company. Well, I guess money isn't everything after all, Joe. It better not be. That's all I can say. <laughs> How well I know what you mean. Oh, by the way, I hope that new maid of yours works out tomorrow, David. Yeah, I hope so, too. I, I'd like to get settled with one. Do you have any idea of what she's going to be like? Oh, I wish I knew. Even that's not important, though. No, the important thing is for her to like the job and stay. Right you are. Keep your fingers crossed, Joe. So long. Bye, David. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday... Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. An ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.